A huge PlayStation 5 firmware update is available to download now, which includes SSD expansion and more. Plus, Sony's latest studio, Fire Sprite, is expanding, and new information has dropped about God of War Ragnarok's combat that you don't want to miss. All this and much, much more in today's edition of the Salty PlayStation News Report. Let's get into it. What's up, PlayStation Nation? Happy Hump Day. Hope you guys are doing awesome. If you want to stay up to date with all things PlayStation and PlayStation 5, be sure to smash that subscribe button and click the bell. In today's first story, a huge update has dropped on the PlayStation 5. That's a huge bitch! You guys are keeping track. This is the second major system update for PlayStation 5 owners globally. The update includes a variety of enhancements to the PlayStation 5 console experience as well as 3D audio support for built-in TV speakers. Speaking of 3D audio, there's a new Pulse 3D wireless headset that's coming out in Midnight Black. And this is what it looks like. They released a trailer this morning and this thing looks juicy. That black on black on black look with the dual sense and 3D headset and console if you have those black shells looks hella good. I'm definitely going to have to cop one of these considering I don't have one of the Pulse 3D headsets yet. But let me know what you guys think of the all new black 3D headset in the comments. As far as the update goes, finally everyone is is getting access to the M.2 SSD storage expansion, which previously was only available to a few select early access PlayStation players that signed up for the beta and that were chosen. But now it's open to everyone worldwide, which enables PlayStation 5 players to store and play PlayStation 5 games, PlayStation 4 games, and media apps directly from the expanded high-speed storage. What's awesome is if you waited just like me, the prices of all these high-speed M.2 SSD these have gone down dramatically since PlayStation announced they are opening up expansion for the M.2 SSD storage a month ago. I've seen a majority of these SSDs go for around 170 to 190 US for a terabyte, and that's way cheaper than they were when this announcement was first made. So you can see the power of competition, like I mentioned before, because PlayStation owners have a choice as to what SSD they want to purchase, that's leading to lower cost. On the other side, for Xbox, you have one choice, so it's pretty much whatever they decide to charge you. Just a reminder, if you're planning on buying one of these SSDs, make sure to double check that it meets all the compatibility requirements provided by PlayStation on their official website. Besides the SSD expansion, what else can we expect in this update? Well, there's actually a ton of stuff coming in this update, and most of it has to do with the user interface and user experience. In the update, we're going to get a control center customization enhanced game base, game library and home screen updates, PlayStation 4 and PlayStation 5 games will now be easily separated and easy to see which ones you're playing. PlayStation Now subscribers can choose between 720p and 1080p. Player awards via accolades on profiles, just like Overwatch. A new trophy tracker, up to five trophies, 3D audio support for TV speakers, and new screen share changes. Starting next Thursday, September 23rd, on the PlayStation app, you're going to be able to screen share broadcast together, join a voice party chat from a mobile device and watch your friend as they share screen via a broadcast. Only players on PlayStation 5 can broadcast via screen share. The Android version of the update is a phased release and may take one week until the update is available on your device. There's also PS4 console enhancements. Well, that's pretty much a summary of what we're getting in this update. It's pretty beefy, lots and lots of improvements improvements for PlayStation 5 gamers. I'm really excited about the SSD expansion and the screen share via the phone. Let me know what you guys are looking forward to. Are you going to be going out and buying an SSD or did you buy one? Which one did you get? And was it difficult to use a screwdriver and a screw? Let's talk about it. In other news, Sony's latest studio, Fire Sprite, is expanding with another 40 available positions to add to the 250 person strong studio. That's pretty big. That's what she said. When Sony announced Fire Sprite Studios was going to join the first party family, the studio was already large, but now with this addition, they're bigger than most of the PlayStation Studios out there. So it should be interesting to see what they're working on. Latest rumor suggests that they're working on a VR project that is going to be set in the world of Horizon Zero Dawn and Horizon Forbidden West. I don't know how I feel about this because we're already getting Horizon Forbidden 
Brandon West. I'm playing Horizon Zero Dawn right now, and I'm actually increasing my liking of that game. It was kind of lower on my tier of open world games for PlayStation, but playing through and experiencing some new things has kind of changed my thought process on it. But if they could differentiate this game significantly from the other games, I think it might be a smart thing. PlayStation's new strategy is to make VR games. There are not full VR experiences, but it's kind of like a hybrid experience between what we get on the PlayStation 5 console and then in the VR space using some of their established products. So this makes sense from that perspective and it would be interesting to go around as Aloy shooting bows at dinosaurs that are made out of metal in VR. It would be interesting to do that. I think that that would sell like hotcakes for a lot of people. I'm excited for PlayStation VR 2. I did not get the PlayStation VR 1 so it should be interesting to see what we get in terms of games going forward. There is that rumored event in December and PlayStation VR 2 is supposed to be dropping in 2022. So exciting things going forward. Speaking of games, real quick, MPD for August 2021 drop and PlayStation games were in the top five. Ghost of Tsushima Director's Cut was number two and Marvel's Spider-Man Miles Morales continues to chart at number five. So PlayStation Studios represented in the top five of August 2021 MPD. We'll probably talk about this topic on the Saltiest Gaming Podcast. Make sure to check that out tomorrow at 8 p.m. Eastern live on the channel. We want to see you in the chat. And finally, in the last bit of news, my favorite game of all time, God of War 2018, had a follow-up trailer in the latest showcase, God of War Ragnarok. And some of the developers have been talking about the game and revealing specific new details about the game, specifically the combat. One of the things that Eric Williams, who now replaces Corey Barlog as the director for the upcoming sequel, has talked about is the combat. He wants the combat to be differentiated from the first game. This is what he had to say about God of War Ragnarok. The studio wants to expand the tool set to allow for more variety and for players to be more expressive in combat. God of War 2 and Ghost of Sparta are probably the two favorite games that I worked on, said Williams, who worked on every previous mainline God of War game. There was a method to both of those games taking the base and then saying, you know what, let's go deep on fan service, let's go big on variety, but not more just to have more, more that was appropriately structured. For me, being first time in the director's chair, I'm going to take the history lessons of the past and I'm going to use those to try to do that. So in Ragnarok, what we are trying to do specifically with Kratos, we're trying to give a lot more expressiveness to the player. Expressiveness will come from various sources, including progression through gear and equipment. Meanwhile, Atreus will be more involved in combat. The way he and Kratos link up, he's grown up a little bit, so he's got a lot more follow-ups and setups for Kratos, Williams said. I'm happy to hear that this game is going to be evolving in terms of gameplay, and you'll be able to be more expressive with your gameplay. One of the things that stands out with God of War games in the past is the variety of weapons that you could use, specifically God of War 3. There's different types of strategies and weapon types that you could use. That was kind of lacking in this God of War, if I have to be honest, because you have basically two weapons. You have the axe and you have the Blades of Chaos, which come in the second half of the game. You could have variations on those weapons, but it, it would be interesting to see what they have to add to this with God of War Ragnarok and how they evolve Atreus's character and what you're able to do with him. As far as the enemies go, I think that the trailers show that they're focusing on a variety of enemies as opposed to the first game where you fought the same troll like a million times. The enemy variety was lacking for sure. I did worry a little bit when I heard that the director was changing and Corey Barlog was not going to be on God of War Ragnarok, but everything that I've heard about Eric Williams from Corey and from David Jaffe, I think this guy knows what he's doing and based off of what he's saying here, I'm super excited to see what kind of changes we're going to be getting with the combat in God of War Ragnarok, but I want to hear from you guys. Are you guys excited for God of War Ragnarok and what kind of changes would you guys like to see to the game specifically with the combat? Let's talk about it. But that's it for today's video. I hope you guys enjoyed it. I enjoyed making it. If you guys are new, make sure to subscribe, hit the bell icon so you can stay up to date with all things PlayStation and PlayStation 5. I hope you guys have a great day, have fun gaming, and as always, stay salty my friends.